Hey guys, what's up? I thought I'd give you another deck today to chew on and potentially play if you're feeling it. Um, and before anyone, you know, uh, mentions that, yes, okay, I have criticised the reveal design in the past for being very, very RNG heavy and just like a bit nonsense, whatever. Um, yes, I still think it is, but that's not going to stop me from making a video about it because it is a strong deck and, you know, I figure people want decks to play maybe that, you know, they haven't come across or whatever and... It was the only deck, honestly, that I had built uh, that I haven't already shown. You know, I haven't made any new decks recently. So, um, yeah, I thought I would bring you the video anyway. I know I'm a bit of a hypocrite, but whatever. you got to play the game that you're given. Uh, that's just the way of life. Um, but okay, what are the cards? So we have Morvran. He's really good. He synergizes nicely with some of the reveal cards, such as Mangonel, which damages units, and Swears, which gets more powerful the more reveals you play. Um, he can be really, really strong later in the game. Uh, and yeah, Morvran is obviously better in three rounds. You can use his ability multiple times, maybe even have it be worth 12 points, which is, I think, one of the highest amount of points you can get from a leader excluding stuff like death wish synergy or whatever from elder or consume uh with arrakis queen or i'm sure there's other things that can get more value like maybe a harold or whatever but basically morvran really top-notch leader three mulligans as well very very good um we have jermaine now this card is going to be synergizing a lot with slave infantry and also golden froth uh, both of which really really powerful cards slave infantry especially can be worth a lot of points and he's talking like nine uh in some cases and you also have card like Vrigef and Vreemdi, which are both synergizing with those slave infantry. Um, Vrigef can also be used on the deploy abilities of Arbalist, Recruit, Spotter, if you need to. And yeah, they're just generating a huge amount of value in the long round with those cows, of course, being one strength units that you can turn into slaves. Um, so that's all well, well and good. Uh, we then have Roach, really decent thinning card and good tempo. We can bully opponents out of round one, maybe, to set up our Golden Froth round three uh, occasionally. And Cleaver as well, really good red coin abuse card. Sometimes your opponent will play a card, then tactical advantage if they're not playing around Cleaver. And that can really punish them. Um, you know, you can deal big, big damage with him. Um, and he can be worth a huge amount of value. Um, next we have, of course, the Froth, the Vrigef. We've said why these are strong. Golden Froth can be 18 points. you just got to make sure you have the row lined up for it. Uh, Asaya is just kind of a 10 point card on average uh, with the Roach being in the deck as well. You just save her for later on and she's an easy 10 for 8, which is really good provisions uh, for points. And we have Necromancy. Uh, this card can be used to revive slave inventory if you use them earlier on. Or Mangonels if they get destroyed, removed, whatever. You can even maybe uh, revive like a Cleaver or something. Uh, wait, no, it's only bronze units. It's only bronze units, I lie. <laughs> but yeah, uh, pretty good on slave inventory and Mangonel. Not a bad card. Um, next we have Witches, which are really, of course, amazing value pretty much in every deck, right? Um, Vreemdi works well with slaves. You buff them all up, get a lot of free points. Slaves, of course, really good. Uh, Darling Foot Soldiers, these might just pop out your deck, give you free points and thinning. If they don't, they're kind of bad. They take up mulligan spots and maybe you can brick them. But at the end of the day, they're still four for five provisions. It's not that bad. It's pretty bad, but it's not the end of the world if you don't get them out of your deck. Um, of course, you do want to mulligan them away if you can. Uh, Mangonels, of course, really, really strong, especially with the Recruits and Arbalists, which both reveal two cards each. So Mangonels are pinging multiple times with these. Uh, and then De Deathwind Arbalist for some free removal and Recruit for some solid provision for points. Same with Spotter. Both can be really solid value for not many provisions. So that's kind of the deck. It's just a tempo deck, which puts out a lot of points if you can't answer their Mangonels, which sometimes it can be hard to because you can buff them up with Morvran or Tactical Advantage or something like that. Um, then it just puts out a huge amount of points, which the opponent often can't deal with. Of course, Froth, really, really strong card. So yeah, we can jump into the gameplay now and see how the deck functions. All right, looks like we're going up against the Woodland Spirit. Pretty uh, strong leader, of course. Um, we'll see what we can do. Basically, we want to maybe not get bled by his big units uh, and push him as far as we can. We're not playing Xavier Lemons, unfortunately, um, so we can't really banish the graveyard. This might also be controlled, you never know, right? Here, we're probably going to want to mulligan the foot soldier just because it is a brick, technically, right? And we can get a huge amount of value if we pull it out the deck. And then we'll keep the rest of the hand. Looks pretty good to me. No more bad cards that we need to get rid of. Alright, so the opponent starts with Necker. It would be really nice if we had Mangonel here to deal with that. We don't, unfortunately. We can just play the Arbalist if we want to kill them. It's probably worth doing. I don't see a reason not to. 
uh, Neckers, of course, are going to be uh, getting him a lot of value if we don't answer them immediately. Um, and we do manage to kill them both, so that's really nice. Um, we don't need to use our leader ability yet. Not sure what we will use it on, but yeah, want to maybe make a big tempo play with Vesemir, Crone, uh, sorry, Roach, and the Morvran play. Um, although there's not really any rush to do that just yet. Probably we want to play a spotter now. This card has to go on melee. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Um, in fact, it's probably better to play all our cards on melee so we can get a Golden Froth. That's uh, probably worth it. We'll play a spotter now, see what we get. Maybe we hit a good unit. That's pretty good. Six for, for four provisions. It's never a bad value card, right? Knackers are going to snowball pretty hard. We don't really have an answer to them. We don't have our own engine, so... Uh, either we're going to have to commit some really good cards here, or just let him have the round. Uh, we're not sure which we'll go for yet. It might be worth playing Jermaine and Slave Infantry this round, actually. And I'm kind of leaning towards that. It also then allows us to do Froth. The alternative is playing Witches and maybe some other cards. Uh, but we kind of want to, you know, push him really hard, I think, here. So I'm going to play Jermaine on the front, get the Roach out, and uh, really start swarming him. We could also play Morvran if we want here. I think it's probably okay to do that. We yeah, had a rider, which of course isn't good, but what can you do? It's only one point difference, it's not too big of a deal. Unlike when you hit something good with a recruit or arbalist or whatever, or spotter. But yeah, we'll see what he does. We can fill up this row pretty quickly, and if we want to play save infantry, we can with Vrigaf. It's really powerful, right? Maybe we don't even commit Froth this round, and we just play the save infantry, the Vrigaf, and the uh, Vreemdi. That's also a possibility. It should be pretty hard for him to keep up with the points here. And uh, if we are able to stay ahead of him after you know getting to the four card mark, then we'll be in really, really good shape. I think I'm going to go ahead and just play the slave infantry on front row. I want to put them next to each other so that, and also next to the spotter, so that you have options with the Vrigaf. Or if uh, one of them gets removed, or you know your ones get removed, maybe you don't want to uh, copy them with, with the Vrigaf. Uh, so that's worth keeping in mind. Here we are just going to play Vrigaf in the middle of these two. Get the value from the cows. Oh, so many points. Really, really nice. And at this stage, the Neckers maybe won't get so much value. Uh, some of his units might not be above four strength. It's possible. Uh, but now we're really putting the pressure on. He could pass here. It's not a bad pass. Um, he at least is unable to be properly bled. Um, you know, should he choose to go for that? He'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll not be able to dry pass is what I mean. Uh, we can bleed him, but not dry pass uh, to get our card because we'll both be on 8. But we'll see what happens. Maybe he's feeling like he can push, and he might be able to. It's possible. Um, we're going to be really happy if we win this round on even, because then we could do a really nice bleed with the Morvran, getting uh, some you know, nice free points effectively, because there's no reason not to use him in 3 rounds if you can. Ah, looks like our opponent's playing on. He's decided that he's happy to go 2 cards down, should we force him to do that. Um, here I'm probably okay just playing for UMD. Um, the only issue is Igni could kind of ruin our day if he has that, but it might still be worth doing it. I think it's probably okay. Maybe it's a bit of a risk and passing is better, but I also don't want to be bled out with the big boys uh, that can really, you know, really hurt you in a short round three. Um, and we might get some more resources out of him here that he uh, wouldn't otherwise be willing to use. Maybe something like Witches or whatever, who knows. I think Golden Froth should always be enough to seal the deal, unless he's playing something really nasty like uh, an Igni or yeah, something like that. Uh, so he just plays another Hound. Here I'm more tempted to pass. Um, we have got the Vreemd out, which is kind of only synergizing with the Slaves. And he's going to have to commit a pretty good card here if he wants to overcome. It might also be worth just playing a Recruit. I think that's probably the play here, because this is a bad card, right? No. And we can then set up the Froth and go for that, should we want to. So. It's nice that he gets 6 points as well. And we'll see what happens. Maybe he is uh, not going to push anymore, it seems like it. So this ended up being really, really, really good for us. We could just drive past now and take our cards. But what we're more likely to do, I think, is play something and the Morvran ability. Uh, to maybe, you know, get some good resources out of him rather than just a bad card. But I think here we keep this hand. It's not too bad. Um, I mean, it looks pretty bad, but, you know. The alternative is, we could just pass and shuffle back his Goliath and deny ghouls. That's another option we have. Um, hmm, what are we feeling here? What are we feeling? 
it might be worth just passing and taking our card. If we don't brick too hard, um, our round three is going to be very, very scary. Kind of okay with that line of play, I think. The alternative is, as I said, maybe going a Sire now and then Morvran, but I kind of don't feel so confident in that line of play. I think just taking the card is, is worth it here. There's no guarantee we get our card if we play a card if we play a card here, right? We could break the mulligan here, we have another foot soldier in deck, and we have witches in deck as well. Also might be worth playing witches early in, with this deck because you are able to uh, have a higher chance of hitting foot soldier with your reveals, so that's something to keep in mind. We didn't go for that uh, this game, but I uh, wanted to preserve the witches for round 3, which isn't necessarily the right play. Uh, might even be wrong, but whatever. This hand looks really nasty, we've got, uh, for him, <laughs> you know, we've got mangonels, which will get some value, not amazing value, but, you know, at least here we're going to be doing some damage with them. Um, we'll probably just play the Morvran ability straight away, even though uh, we don't get the second mangonel proc on it. I think just killing the Arc Spore is worth it. Uh, I can play mangonel and spotter and recruit, of course. Going to be pretty valuable. And then, uh, yeah, golden froth to, to close the game out effectively. It's also probably worth playing the Witches before we play uh, some of our other stuff. Uh, so yeah, particularly our Recruit, that could be yeah worth it. I think we probably get rid of the Goliath from the Graveyard here. It might deny him a fair amount of points. Then again, maybe it's not worth it, because he does get a 5. We'd only gain 1 point over taking Roach. Uh, so probably Roach is, is the better one here, actually, now that I think about it. We can go ahead and play uh, another Manganel, I think. Not really an issue. Maybe we want to try remove something with Spotter. If he plays Neckers or I don't know, he's already played Neckers, but Arxbor again or something. I don't know. Anything is possible. It looks like he's just going to remove one. That's fair enough. Can't really blame him for that. But I think now we probably are fine to play Witches. Maybe Spotter first. I'm a little bit. I probably shouldn't be scared of Epidemic, but I'm a little bit scared of it. Emirath in the deck. That's what I like to see. <laughs> Not on the board. Card can be quite scary if you have a way to make him immune or whatever. Alright. Uh, this is an interesting one. It might be correct to go for Recruit now, even though we might not hit the Foot Soldier. I think it's probably, yeah, worth doing because we have the chance to uh, kill the Drowner. We do get the Foot Soldier anyway, so that's nice. Really, really big tempo swing. Oh, and we kill the Drowner. Perfect. RNG is going my way. Lucky me. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Spear tip comes down, we can probably go ahead and just shuffle Roach. I don't think there's any point shuffling his Goliath, it's kind of a win more play, uh, which we don't need to do. do just put the Roach back in, she comes out immediately with, with the Sire, so that's, you know, very strong. Uh, we might not get the full value from Froth here, in fact I'm pretty sure we don't, but that's not the end of the world, I mean, you see we're pretty far ahead in points already, right? So, as long as we get a little bit of value from Froth, it's okay. Uh, Jermaine definitely helps you get that value because he puts five bodies on the board, so keep that in mind. Maybe you don't want to commit him to the wrong round. Oh no! And the opponent misplays Ghoul as well. That is uh, that is awkward, to uh, say the least. So play uh, Swears first, of course. Probably Witch's last card or something. Yeah. We're winning by a huge amount of points. As you see, the deck is pretty strong, and that was partly why I have an issue with, with the review. Partly, I mean. The RNG inherent in the cards is only made worse because of the power level of the deck. But yeah, that was a pro ladder game. Not, not even finished my Nilfgaard games, but uh, yeah, I hope that gives you another deck to play if you're feeling like some uh, casino, more Hearthstone-y gameplay than maybe you're used to in Gwent. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, yeah. Have a good one, guys, and I'll uh, see you next time.